The scent of diesel and the thunderous cacophony of warfare enshrouded the battlefield near Leningrad in January of 1944. The Leningrad Novgorod offensive had begun, and the fire of cannons, small arms, and mortars were the guiding lights of the bloody slaughter it would become. Today's story ends here, on the 17th of January, 1944. An unlikely conclusion for an unlikely story about a unique woman who went against the grain of her time and made a mark on one of the world's greatest armed conflicts. Her name was Maria Vasilvenia Aktyabraskaya. As the battle raged around her, an explosive knocked the track off of her tank, Fighting Girlfriend, the name of her tank, Maria and members of her tank team jumped out of the tank and sprang into action. Hustling to and fro within the roar of warfare and the dazzling lights of shots fired in hate, they frantically worked to repair their tank's track. No doubt a sigh of relief flooded over Mar Maria as she stood next to the completed project. Her comrades' cover fire erupting mere feet away, applauding their effort. Only interrupted by the enemy's angry retorts. Unbeknownst to her, death was already raining down from the sky. The mortar shell of an enemy collided with the scorched earth nearby, hurtling shrapnel into her head, leaving her unconscious. Hello and welcome back to the Plutarch Project podcast. Today we will be talking about a figure from World War II, a little-known figure from World War II, and going over their life and some of the spectacular things that they did. I hope you enjoy. If you do, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, all that good stuff that you already know about. All right. Thank you very much, and we will begin early, early in the 20th century. We hope you enjoy. Maria Vasilvenia Octavia Borovskaya's story begins years before in the then sleepy Crimean Peninsula. Maria was one of ten children, ten children living the life of rural peasants of the soon to be Soviet Union. Could you imagine living with nine other brothers and sisters? Holy guacamole, especially as a peasant. Get out of town. The English and Russian sources differ on her exact date of birth placing it sometime between 1902 and 1905. There's little known about her early years, other than she completed the equivalent of high school and post-high school work. In the early 1920s, she concluded schooling and began first working at a cannery in Simferpol. Later, she began work as a telephone operator at a city telephone exchange. Life seemed to be moving forward at a leisurely pace for Maria. In 1925, she found love in the form of a handsome cavalry school cadet, Ilya Fedotovich Rerenenko. Soon after meeting, they got married. Going to the chapel, gonna get married. And they took the family name of Oktyabrovsky. Note that the name will change slightly depending if I'm talking about the husband or wife. Uh, because of the variancy in the Russian language, so keep that in mind. The life of Maria began the fast track toward becoming a legendary figure of the Soviet Union after their wedding. They were stationed all throughout Ukraine. As her husband trained and became more adept at his warrior craft, Maria became active in women's councils and volunteer work. Among the other wives of the command staff, she was envied for her abilities in needlework, fashion, and homemaking. Although this was impressive, Maria also took a keen interest into the workings of her husband's life. She graduated from medical care courses, learned the basics of driving a tank and other vehicles, and mastered machine gun shooting. Overall, she became one badass woman. Maria was quoted as stating, Marry a serviceman, and you'll serve in the army. An officer's wife is not only a proud woman, but also a responsible title. 
Now, watch this shot. Ta, 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 ta. In 1940, they joined the USSR and her husband became the commissar of the 134th Howitzer Artillery Regiment. It was a relatively peaceful time until the outbreak of war between the USSR and Nazi Germany. The day after the declaration of war, June 23, 1941, Akhtiabrovskaya, along with her sister and other members of the families of USR, USSR officers, were evacuated to Siberia. Hoping to do her part to help, she once again took up the reins as a telephone operator, this time helping out an artillery school that had been recently evacuated from Leningrad. During this time, her husband fought valiantly in Kiev. As the fading sun of summer lingered before the long, cold, dark winter, Maria received word that her husband had died in battle. The death notification reads as follows, quote, Regimental Commissar Ilya Fedovojich Akhtryobrovsky died the death of a brave on August 9th, 1941, in one of the battles in Ukraine. The Commissar I.F. Akhtryobrovsky, Commissar of the 206th Infantry Division, was hit by a machine gun burst, leading his men to attack in one of the battles near Kiev." Unquote. Upon receipt of the notification, Maria stormed into the enlistment office and demanded to be sent to the front, perhaps as a nurse. Time and time again, she was turned down due to her age, she was 36 years old at this time, and past illnesses, including uh, tuberculosis. It was here at this moment when most people would simply have thrown in the towel that she had an idea that would propel her to greatness. Although fighting on the front was one way to support the war effort, there was also monetary support through donation. Although adhering to the principles of communism, there was uh, still a little bit of money around, particularly for officers in the military. Maria devised a plan to sell all of her belongings and make and sell her superior needlework creations. Eventually, she earned 50,000 rubles, the exact cost of a T-34 tank. Yee-haw! After several months, Maria had saved up enough and just a little bit more to send a telegram to the Kremlin with the following message. Quote, Dear Honorable Joseph Stalin, in the battles for the homeland, my husband died. The regimental commissar Akhtyabrovsky Ilya Fedorovich, for his death, for the death of all Soviet people tortured by fascist barbarians, I want to take revenge on the fascist dogs for which I have contributed all my personal savings to the state bank for the building of a tank. 50,000 rubles. I ask that you call the tank, quote, fighting girlfriend, unquote, and send me to the front as the driver of this tank. I have a specialty as a driver, I have good command of machine guns, and I am an excellent shooter. I send you warm greetings and wish you long, long years to fear the enemies and the glory of our country, unquote. After some debate, the Defense Department, seeing the tenacity and most likely the public relations opportunity, gave in and allowed Maria's plan to evolve into a reality. She was sent to a five-month tank training school at the Omsk Tank School. Most new tank drivers were quickly trained and sent to the front. This may be due to the propaganda opportunities she offered to the USSR. In September of 1943, she finished training and became the country's first female tank driver and mechanic. A magnificent feat in and of itself. In October, a month later, she went to the front with her new tank crew, Commander Junior Lieutenant... Oh, sorry, I'm going to slaughter all these names once again. Pyotr Chabakto, Tower Gunner Sergeant, Gennady Yasko, and 
Gunner, Mikhail Galkin. Maria was given her new tank, and across the side they painted Fighting Girlfriend. Soon, she was on her way to the front, and one step closer to the legend that she would become. On October 21st, 1943, in the city of Smolensk, Fighting Girlfriend joined the fray in some particularly intense fighting. Maria drove her tank through the battlefield, destroying Nazi machine gun nests, artillery guns, and foot soldiers. During the fighting, her tank was hammered by gunfire. Pop, 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 pop. Maria knew they would be sitting ducks without a quick fix. Going against orders, she jumped out of her tank and fixed the broken hydraulic system, returning to the pilot's seat, and then kept on kicking ass. For her heroic actions, she was promoted to sergeant, and her legend grew bigger within the USSR. The next notable battle took place in the village of Novoye Selo on November 18, 1943. During the fighting, Maria and her tank broke through the enemy's defenses, destroying artillery and massacring nearly 50 soldiers. Artillery and small arms fire disabled her tank once again, and although they were immobile, they continued fighting. Maria and members of her tank crew were wounded. For two days, they repelled one enemy attack after another. Finally, they were evacuated and sent to receive medical help. Afterward, the tank battalion's commander praised their efforts, stating, quote, Fight like the tankers of the fighting girlfriend! Fight! Only today, the crew of a glorious machine destroyed a platoon of Nazi bandits, unquote. During this time, she wrote a letter to her sister in which she stated, I have had my baptism by fire. I beat the bastards. Sometimes I'm so angry, I can't even breathe. Like all great legends, her story had to come to an end. The thunderous cacophony of warfare enshrouded the battlefield near Leningrad on January of 1944. The Leningrad-Novgorod offensive had begun, and the fire of cannons, small arms, and mortars were the guiding lights of the bloody slaughter it would become. Today's story ends here, on the 17th of January, 1944. As she stood successful in her endeavor, death was already raining down from the sky. A mortar shell of an enemy collided with the earth nearby, hurtling shrapnel through her skull into her brain, leaving her unconscious. After the battle, she was sent to a Soviet hospital where she remained in a coma for two months. She died March 15, 1944. After her death, she was hailed as a hero of the Soviet Union and was buried in one of the most sacred cemeteries of the USSR. She remains a tale of what can be done when the fires of vengeance are stoked. We hope you enjoyed today's short podcast. Thank you very much for stopping by. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, comment, dance. Do whatever you gotta do. Just do you. Thank you very much. Keep an eye out. Uh, We're going to have a couple of podcasts coming out rapid fire. So keep tuning in. Thank you very much. Peace, love, happiness, onward. Good day.